welcome all to the foundry shop exercise so this is the foundry shop of nat calicut this is situated at the left end of our mechanical workshop so generally foundry shop is used to make metal castings metals or alloys can be casted into different shapes by melting the metal or alloys and then pouring them into the shape required so this shape is made inside a molding box so after the molten metal is poured it is set for solidification after solidification we remove the molding and we will get the required shape you can observe how the things are arranged inside our foundry shop you will get to know these things in detail in the coming sessions of this video so this tool is called the round rammer and the next tool this is the small rammer these are the two rammers we are using for ramming this is the filler tool this is used to fill the corners of the molding box next one is the strike off bar and this is used to remove the extra sand these are through pins and you can see one of them can be used for runner and the other for riser this tool is lifter and it is also known as cleaner this tool is the draw spike and this is used to remove the pattern from the molding box you can see it clearly this one is the vent wire and this is used to make vent holes in the box you might be familiar with this tool this is the trowel this tool is called bellow and this is used to remove unwanted sand from the mold you can see the molding sand lying on the floor this is the sieve that we are using to filter the sand and you can see the shovel which is used to handle the molding sand now let's see some patterns used in our foundry shop the first one is a wooden pattern this is also wooden pattern but both of these are single piece patterns these are split patterns and these are metal patterns also you can see why they are called split patterns because they have two parts you may be familiar with this shape this is a pulley and it is made using a split pattern so let's start the mold preparation so the first important step is the sand preparation so you can see the sand is transferred from the ground to the sieve using a shovel so with the sieve we are filtering the sand this is done to remove any foreign particles or big particles present in the sand after that we need to add water so the ingredients of molding sand are silica sand clay and water so you can see now you are adding water to the sand after adding water we need to thoroughly mix the ingredients using your hand you can rub consistency of the sand is very important so you can see they are doing the process for very long time so this is how the sand will look like after thoroughly mixing it so the molding sand are of different types we have coarse sand green sand dry sand etc 
and it is clearly differentiated in the reading material and also the properties of the sand are mentioned the sand should have good adhesiveness cohesiveness and permeability now this is the parting sand we are using to part the surfaces so let's start the mold preparation again we are mixing the sand okay so the preparation was already explained so we have mixed the sand once again so let's see the molding boxes the top portion is called the cope and the bottom portion is called the drag so here we are using the wooden single piece pattern it's a simple pattern and we are placing the pattern in the drag box the bottom one drag box and we have to place it in the center of the drag box after placing we have to fill the box with our already prepared molding sand we can see how the sand is filled so we need to fill the box completely and then we are using the filler rod to fill the corners of the molding box this is how the process is done after this you can add more sand to the box okay so this is done step by step again we are adding more sand and we will be continuing this process so this is to ensure that all the corners of the molding box as well as the pattern is filled with sand so we have completed the filling process now we are using the small rammer to ram the sand so you can see how it is done so this is to ensure that the sand is tightly packed inside the molding box So we have to ram the sand till we get sufficient density of the sand. So as we ram the sand inside the drag box will get compacted thus the sand density across the drag is uniformly distributed. We are continuing the ramming process. are again filling the box with sand and then we have changed the tool to the round rammer so now we are ramming the sand inside the box using the round rammer 
can see how tightly the sand is packed inside the molding box. Now we are using the strike off bar to strike off the excess sand on the box. You can see the use of the strike off bar very clearly. The excess amount of sand has been cleared and the surface of the sand is made flattened. We are using the trowel to finish the surface. There were some deformities. We are clearing it now using the trowel. The trowels are basically employed for smoothing or slickening the surface of molds. They may also be used to cut in gates and repair the mold surfaces. So we have seen a repairing activity just now. So the surface is done. Now we are going to rotate the drag box. So you can see how the drag box is rotated. The drag box is ready. Now we are finishing the surface of the top portion of the drag using shovel and then we are using the parting sand. We are sprinkling the parting sand over the drag sand surface. This parting sand is nothing but pure silica. So this is added to ensure a clear separation between the coop and drag. After placing the coop, again we will be adding sand and we will be doing the ramming process. So in order to avoid the mixing of the sand, we are making a clear parting surface. So after sprinkling the parting sand, we have to remove the excess sand by using the bellow. So this is the use of bellow. Now we are placing the cope, the top portion of the molding box over the already prepared drag portion. The alignment of the boxes should be ensured. Now let's place runner and riser. Riser is placed exactly at the center of the pattern and runner is placed away from the pattern. After that, we have to add sand again. So we are adding sand to the cope box now. This is the top portion. So the sprue pins used for runner and riser should be maintained till the sand is added. So the pins are fixed. Now we are using the filler tool to fill the corners of the cope box. We are repeating the same process that was done in the drag box.
now we are ramming the curve box The final ramming is done using the round rammer. So now we are using the strike of bar to remove the excess sand from the cope box. So this won't be easy as we did for the drag box. This is due to the presence of the runner and riser. The location of these pins are very important for the operation. And we have to remove the excess sand without disturbing their positions. This is how it is done.
finally we are using the trowel to finish the surface Now we are using the cleaner or lifter tool to cut the riser cup. So the excess metal would be coming out through the riser and there is a cup which has a larger diameter than the riser. Then we are using the bellow to remove the unwanted sand from the surface. So the surface is finished and we are doing the same for runner and this one is called pouring basin. So we are introducing the molten metal to the cavity through this pouring basin. Again, we are removing the excess unwanted sand using bellow. We are blowing the sand from the surface using the bellow. Once the surface is finished, we have to make vent holes on the co box. This is done by using the vent wire. Before making the holes, measure the depth of the co box with vent wire. Then make holes up to the depth of the co box. So these holes are made for the gases to escape. So when we are pouring molten metal, there can be chances that many gases are formed inside the molding box. So these vent holes are a passage for these gases to escape from the molding box. So once that is done, again there can be some excess sand and that is removed using the bellow. The next step is to remove the runner and riser. And this is a crucial part of our operation. It should be done very carefully. So you can see the runner and riser are shaken slowly and then they are removed very slowly and very carefully. So there can be chances that the molding can deform because of this. So that should be done very carefully. After that they are finishing the surfaces or cleaning the surface using the cleaner. Now they are cleaning the workspace.
now we are going to open the box we are taking the co box out first there is some deformation and we are removing that so that deformation on the other box is being clean now using some sand that is nicely done now we have to cut the gate so you have seen that the runner is placed away from the pattern and it is the portion through which the molten metal is entering the cavity so for it to reach the cavity we have to cut the gate you can see how it is done and always the excess sand is blown out using the bellow so this is the gate We are finishing the gate surface. So the molten metal is poured through the pouring basin. It passes through the runner and reaches the gate. The gate is the passage for the molten metal to enter the mold cavity. Once the molten metal reaches the mold cavity, it fills the cavity first and then it goes through the riser. Now we are going to remove the pattern from the box. For that, we are using the draw spike. So we are shaking the pattern. This should be done very carefully. So since we are removing the pattern by shaking off, we should give proper allowance to the pattern. You can see how carefully he has done that. And the finishing is done using the trowel. You can see how the cavity is finished. Now the wall process is done. So our mold cavity is ready inside the molding box. Now you will be shown a sample casting that was done using a similar molding cavity. So this is it. So you can see the extra projections. So these extra projections are from the runner and riser. We need to remove them using some machining operations. So once the molten metal solidifies, we have to break the mold. So this is how the breaking is done. And the casting is removed.
and the other portion is also broken hope you got an idea about what is being done in the foundry shop so thank you